I started my career as a surgeon 30 years ago. I saw many patients we could not help, including my own father. So that was the major reason why I decided to change my career. With this technology, we can make iPS cells from patients. We can make beating heart cells from iPS cells. So instead of organ, we can transplant beating heart cells into patients. It's just fantastic. Collaboration with other scientists is very important, but communication with non-scientists is equally important. Facilities like Miraikan is essential to help that kind of stimulation. Miraikan acts as a hub internationally, connecting the world for a sustainable future. Miraikan also houses 11 actual research laboratories doing cutting-edge research. We are hosting the Science Center World Summit in Tokyo. The summit will involve not only scientists, but also other field of society. One thing we've learned in the last couple of years is that local problems become global problems. And so it's only by working on the big problems together that we have any chance of solving things for everyone tomorrow. We have been conducting the Picture Happiness on Earth project in which science-loving teenagers present their vision of happiness. As an advanced nation in science research and technology, we are proud to contribute to the global realization of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals proposed for the betterment of the world and human sustainability. How about this for size? You're going to be like, Max, you're doing it again with Jasmine q and What about Jasmine and Energy Web Token? Nope. It's going to be used as an example. So I want to state this. If you Jasmine is your thing tonight, you have tuned in on a great broadcast tonight. So this isn't going to be where I'm like, hey, there's a, you know, a Jasmine, um, you know, like I did before, Jasmine QNT uh, connection. Um, if anything, Energy Web Token is going to be used as an example uh, to basically bring something to you that you might not have been aware about. I want you guys to honestly, whether you hold Jasmine or not, think outside the box and realize the uh, the main goals of achieving what? Society 5.0, but also realizing like uh, key industry players, if you will, Vanguard and, and whatnot, right? We always mention Vanguard, BlackRock and so on and how they come to the mix. So first of all, I want you guys to give Menno Laguar a follow if you haven't done so. He can be followed on the X platform just like you see right here. And his name is Menno Laguar. I'm going to type it into the comments. Yeah, give him a follow on X. I just put it into the comments. And just like Neo X Tricks, you want to follow some of these guys. going to keep you informed, especially when it comes to the real deep information, especially on Jasmine. So without further ado, let's go ahead and kick it into our Jasmine coverage. I'm going to put on some of the branding real quick. All right. Let's get into this. Again, I'll re-advise you guys to please smash that like because, if anything, I feel like we're going to earn it tonight when it comes to this coverage, this deep coverage in regards to Jasmine and so on. And I want you to see this for yourself. This is pretty cool stuff. Um, first, I'm going to get into my notes real quick. And basically speaking, Menelagor, excuse me, got more into this topic. And this is a big topic to get into. And basically speaking, there is this whole thing in regards to something that he was kind of curious about. And now it, it obviously spiked my curiosity. And, you know, we talked about things researching, you know, obviously quant from, um, you know, the whole thing with BlackRock and, you know, the ghost inside the machine in regards to um, Aladdin. Aladdin also can cover another particular area that we need to bring you to your attention. So basically speaking, how do we tie this whole thing in regards to Aladdin, even with Jasmine? Well, easy. AI. Now, I want you to think about this. You know, it's super deep. It's super interesting, just like Menelagoar basically mentioned. And, you know, there's just crazy layers of stuff we can get into in regards to Jasmine. Um, but basically, 
artificial intelligence, BlackRock, all this stuff. It, it's it's just it's it's nuts, right? Absolutely nuts. There is this project in regards to SoftBank, BlackRock, and Clarity AI. I had to load up the notes because some people DM me and then it, my, my, my note meter goes crazy. But yes, SoftBank and BlackRock, Clarity AI. What is Clarity AI? Okay, do I have your attention? So some of you guys who are the nerds of our, you know, blockchain DLT enthusiast crew may know about this. Most do not. Let's just be honest. Here it is. It's called Clarity, literally called Clarity. Kind of funny how... We always talk about regulatory clarity, right? No pun intended. But this particular site, which is at clarity.ai, talks about sustainability, um, or excuse me, uh, sustainably, right? Sorry about that. Invest sustainably, shop sustainably, and report or benchmark for sustainably with ease of use or ease to use AI powered tech. They have a lot that's mentioned here, their platform, what they're into, right? But they talk about this right here, and it states that you can build blocks for every sustainability use case. You can cover your needs related to data. And of course, we're gonna tie this all into the whole thing of why we would make it even a, a jasmine connection here, okay? Um, but it goes on to mention that there's a lot of capabilities in regards to modular infrastructure. You even know the concept of, you know, like even like the example I mentioned, modular power supply, being able to have more options and compared to one linear option, right? So they have, of course, the mission. And I do want to share this with you for just a moment. Let's pull this up. And as this pulls up, it says this is their mission. They want to bring an impact to the markets the markets i think the whole purpose of aladdin is to bring huge impact to the institutional investors right so it goes on to mention they uh, of course create this whole thing with um the decisions of data driven unbiased information thereby increasing user confidence in their decisions and how it makes a basic you know impact in regards to this so i'm going to play this for just a brief bit and then we're going to do in my opinion, a good job of why you should pay attention to this. It's not a nothing burger at all. It'll really raise some eyebrows and give you greater insight to the big picture of all this. So please smash that like if you haven't done this already. Let's go ahead and play this real quick. Clarity AI is the leading tech platform measuring the social and environmental impact of investments and organizations. Powered by machine learning, Clarity AI has built the most comprehensive and customizable solution to assess sustainability, combining the highest quality data and algorithms, science-based scores, and sophisticated tools for all the critical areas, ESG risk, impact, climate, and regulation. Through Clarity AI's seamless integration into your workflows and platform, or by accessing our end-to-end -end web application, sustainability assessment has never been easier. Clarity AI bringing social impact to markets. All right, not super long, obviously, right? Social impact to markets. Let that resonate in your head for a second. Now, getting more into this, I want to share some more notes with you guys. And basically speaking, that when we talked about Clarity AI, like we just did, um, there's this whole thing about collecting what is referred to as ESG data. Now, do you know about ESG data or does that sound Greek to you? Now, for the average person, it may definitely seem very, very Greek to you. And guess what? That's okay. Let's introduce what the heck this is all about in regards to ESG data. So for one, what is ESG data analytics and what's this basically like, what's their strategy, right? So basically speaking, back to the whole thing with Vanguard, right? Investors want sustainable companies in their portfolios. True. Simultaneously, governments and consumers expect companies to conduct their business operations, of course, responsibly. After all, the world knows how industrial activities have threatened environmental and social harmony. Again, hence why clarity, you see the whole thing about mentioning the whole social thing. This post will explore ESG data. Now, I'm going to get into all of it. I'm just going to give the nitty gritty because I don't want to make this two hours. But what is ESG data analytics? And if anything, why is that important to you? 
especially as a Jasmine holder. And I know it, it seems crazy to mention some of these things, but ESG data analytics leverages, just think about this for a second, right? And we're going to definitely tie in what you want Legron shared in regards to BlackRock a little bit later into the show. But this data analytics for ESG leverages computing science and statistics to inspect an organization's environmental, social, and governance compliance levels. And we're always talking about regulatory compliance. But what about some of the other compliance? Now, as we know, when it comes to Jasmine, they're the first of its kind, or the first, I should say, when it comes to Japan and regulatory compliance. You know, Japan is so much more strict compared to the United States when it comes to regulatory compliance. So with that said, look at this. Industries and asset managers, because we do talk about BlackRock, and we also talk about Vanguard, utilize ESG data analytics for sustainability accounting compliance reporting and peer analysis that's why you see for instance the aladdin ai so turbocharged if you will going more into this two companies in the same industry that will perform differently on esg markets there's this whole thing of data analysts that have redeveloped their legal compliance models to address challenges and comparative studies but look at this in regards to that esg report it states that they offer what they offer excuse me will impact investors to make more informed choices regarding whether to buy or sell a particular stock. You know, it's kind of funny. We can even give, you know, Todd, AKA common sense, who are part of a part of our community. Think about what his app provides in regards to Tradex, right? So what about some of the components of this ESG uh, analysis? And again, I'm just going to highlight two things before I get too deep into that environmental and social. For the purposes of what we didn't mention already, I'm going to bring this whole thing to you in regards to environmental. Number one, sustainable accounting guidelines expect corporations to address carbon risk associated with their industrial operations. If you're type of nerd that takes notes in regards to that, don't forget that one. So metrics like deforestation and threats to biodiversity will encompass mining, construction, and even fishing companies. You know, here at Maximus Crypto, I joke around and with magic power and so on. And I say, you know, Jasmine with the rice crop consortium. But is that really a joke or is that a real thing? Again, we're going to reference that here in a bit as well. Now, jumping into more of why you need to pay attention to this. Um, I'm going to get back into my own notes here in a bit. Basically speaking, Menelagoar had a lot that I guess you could say needs to be mentioned. So for one, we talked about Clarity AI and the collecting of ESG data, right? So you got to keep in mind, in regards to Jasmine, Jasmine's pairing with the yen, as in, you know, of Japan, right, is crucial in regards to the step forward to get heavy into this ESG sector. Now do I have your attention? And all those green carbons, does that also have your attention? ESG data gives Aladdin SuperSight, for instance, because we did talk about Aladdin in regards to the whole quant coverage that we had, um, gives them SuperSight and Carbon Market and BlackRock, for instance, even backing who? For you guys who are invested into Energy Web Token, well, backing Energy Web Token. And of course, one of its founders, which are TEPCO. Now, this seems like a little bit speculative, but is there really a connection here? And if anything, is it worth pointing out? What's worth pointing out is the industry players, and if anything, even from an educational side of things. And if you know where I'm going with this, you better know where I'm going with this. Kunitaki Ando, right? Absolutely. So here's the bigger picture, okay? And that is, can we take the next big step into this whole data sector of ESG? And if so, why is it so important to recognize, for instance, Vanguard, who's buying into Japanese energy projects? Does that not have your attention as well? So I wanna take you over to a re-reminder in regards to um, Jasmine and some of these industries, obviously, okay? So for one, the thing I want to point out here is in regards to what was posted a while back from Jasmine in regards to carbon credits, their initiative, all this stuff, right? 
So basically speaking, this is from their medium a while back. And the cool thing here is, even though it's an old report, tying the past into the present to give you a, a broader perspective of, wow, this is something else. I have an idea now of the bigger picture. So from Jazzy Medium, it states, environment set forth guidelines for decarbonization trading in October 2021. Right, a couple of years ago, literally, we're in October. Um, they talk about voluntary credits are attracting increasing attention in Japan since this credit can be issued in a short period. What's one of the key industry players or institutional players that are into Japan for all this? Yeah, Vanguard. So NCCC will create voluntary carbon credits using local Japanese advantages such as force agricultural lands. Hence why we referenced the Rice Crop Consortium. We'll get into that a little bit later. But in addition, by utilizing ICT and calculating CO2 absorption, we as in JASME aim to improve the efficiency of the certification process, shorten the time required to issue the credits, and lower the price of just that, those credits. Now, for all the criticism Jasmine has gotten, you know, in regards to jumping from one chain to this new thing, why give it so much criticism? Understand that they are sticking to that roadmap, or if anything, um, what was suggested into the white paper that in order to fulfill some of these things that are part of this outline, you have to have scalability. So it is to be expected that an AI blockchain solution, a layer two, would make sense. So getting into this, it says that they aim to improve this efficiency of the certification project, uh, process, shorten the time required, so on and so forth. The increase in abandoned farmland, listen to this for a second, and poorly managed forests in Japan due to the lack of subsequent owners caused by its population aging and decline in birth rate is a social issue. Remember, we also talked about that just previously. And of course, it's an issue for local Japanese communities to prevent disasters and converse biodiversity. Now, when we get to the Nagoya University segment, you're going to understand the bigger picture here. For one, and here's the key highlight, and this is even from Hara originally. Hara wanted us all to pay attention to this key thing here. And I know Hara gets a lot of criticism, but at least I'll give him credit on this. And that is Jasmine Incorporated strongly, of course, supports NCCC's initiatives to create carbon credits and revitalize what? The market. The market. Then you see what we're going to also show here in regards to Vanguard. So just hold tight, look into this. It says, we will contribute to realizing a carbon neutral and decarbonized society by providing various tech, such as a token issuance and unique blockchain tech. Hence, obviously, tying everything in regards to AI, Internet of Things. And guess what? Branching into finance. But for the purposes of tonight's outline, we'll focus mainly on still IoT, AI, and so on. Now, getting back a little bit more into my notes, I want to point out some other key things here. And again, thanks to Mental Logwar. And that basically is why Vanguard is buying so much into all of this. All right. And that's a great question, right? I mean, we all want to know about that. But before we give you a little bit more in regards to actual proof of Vanguard, because I mean, some people know about it, some people don't, let's be honest. We got a fast track to Nagoya, okay? And if you're wondering in regards to Nagoya, um, there's this whole thing in regards to Nagoya University. And basically speaking, there are two very important R&D projects in the work, all right? So for one, I'm gonna pull up this real quick. And um, for one, you know, it's, I guess you could say it's Kunitaki Ando. So I want to share this just in case for your newcomer and you're like, I have no idea where he's going with this. Kunitaki Ando is basically the head honcho over at Jasmine. Okay. He is a former Sony uh, executive, as we know. He even shared the stage with um, Steve Jobs, I, bat I believe back in like, you know, 2005 in regards to Apple and so on. And if anything, he's put in more than enough time in regards to all of this the internet of things sony you name it even with jasmine some people have stated that kazamasa sato will probably be the next in line to just be the the number one guy to take it away and you know um 
Otto might just be an honorary chairman at some point. Who knows, right? But still, we do need to recognize Ando because like you see on the screen here at the very bottom, Ando currently serves as chairman of the University of Nagoya, right? Or Nagano, excuse me. And, you know, when we tie in all to all this and so on, it's like, hmm, very, very interesting to see all this, um, you know, and, and the, the locations and so on. I know we talk about Nagoya and then this is Nagano, but um, my point is I want you guys to see the broader picture, the broader perspective in regards to this. So uh, regarding Nagoya, sorry about that. Um, they are also working on some of these ambitious renewable energy initiatives, excuse me. Sometimes when it comes to Nagoya, Nagano, um, it's easy to get kind of that mixed up. But my point is ESG goals, right? So they're aimed at integrating various clean energy sources like solar and wind into the existing grid. Companies like Shubu Electric are also involved. It aligns with broader ESG goals. Now, back to the whole thing of not just Nagoya, but the whole thing of this original tweet from Hara in regards to carbon credits and all that. Here it is. And basically speaking, he stated a while back, I think it was a few months ago, supporting the global carbon a neutral challenge, jo uh, Jasmine, excuse me, re uh, joins the Rice Crop Consortium. Hence why I always joke about it, right? You know, the Rice Crop Consortium, right? But it's a real thing, just in case you didn't know that, okay? And it's to generate credits and promote carbon neutrality. Um, like he also mentioned, blockchain carbon credit exchange built on Jasmine platform provides a reliable and convenient environment for the distribution and use of credits. It was originally posted in the uh, PR Times. And, you know, you got to keep in mind, that's a pretty darn big uh, publication. Blowing this up a little bit bigger. Yes, it's in Japanese, but you do see here the industries are going to contribute to this. Whether it's NTT Communications water cell and even jasmine all right getting more into why you should pay attention to this here we go and basically speaking menelon has got some more notes obviously um and basically speaking he states that in regards to mobility there's also this whole thing in regards to softbank and toyota they have an initiative of focusing on smart transportation solutions including autonomous vehicles smart city infrastructure, hence why we talk about Society 5.0. But basically speaking, Toyota is an active participant given its headquarters and R&D facilities in the Nagoya area. Now, in regards to Nagano University, I apologize to that. We're going to show you that connection sometimes with all the Japanese cities and so on. Even I can mess that part up, but I'm going to get that straight for it. All right. So getting into this, um, what I wanted to point out was again back to the whole thing of not just vanguard but we're going to talk about blackrock for instance right because we talked about energy web token and so on and the key thing in regards to the outline is this whole concept of esg data now this is where i want you to think outside the box in regards to jasmine entering into this particular sector okay so for one all the way back on december 1st of 2020 and let me just double check you can see this okay yes you can good thank god right anyway um blackrock back on the end of you know 2020 they unveiled a new offering to power investors and of course this was a transition to net zero emissions hopefully this still has your attention remember we talked about aladdin so for one aladdin climate sets a new standard at least then and providing investors actionable security level data on climate risk are you not paying attention to how we're tying all this in of course, at the time, they had new partnerships with Sustain Analytics. And again, at the beginning of the outline, you even saw Clarity AI in regards to uh, Sustain Analytics. See how it's all tied in? Crazy stuff, right? And just because, you know, it's a different um, institutional um, juggernaut, if you will, they all have similar interests. And some of those similar interests are Sustain Analytics, right? um or not sustain analytics sustain analytics excuse me read too much the words just kind of come up on the screen at some point it's just another word but anyway refinitive add to esg data indicators and of course that's available through aladdin um back to aladdin for a second because this is good 
Atlantic, Aladdin Climate, of course, was the first software application to offer investors measures of both the physical risk of climate change and the transition risk to a low carbon economy on portfolios with climate and justice security valuations and risk metrics. So that's always worth paying attention to. There's a quote from Rod, excuse me, Rob Goldstein, who is BlackRock's chief operating officer. He says, yet while lots of people are taking are talking about climate risk today, and they are, let's face it, they still are, what investors need to make informed decisions is data tied to specific securities in their portfolio. That in itself is interesting. Does that even fuel more the debate of, you know, the ones that are going to survive of this 99% that are going to go away in regards to crypto? I'm just, I'm just saying. There's an evolution in regards to ESG data. And again, this is why I want to point some things out for Jasmine. I think why Menelagwar wants to point out as well. Investors have long highlighted the need for improved ESG data to increase sustainable investing strategies. Right. Now the dramatic growth in relevant corporate disclosures and unstructured data has created unprecedented opportunities to enhance climate analytics. Now, at least back then in 2020, listen to this, more than 85% of S&P 500 companies disclosed ESG data compared to 20% 10 years even before that back in 2010. And sustainability accounting standards boards disclosures, of course, have increased, listen to this, 288% back then what about a, a you know more recent report well i wasn't able to get that but still worth paying attention to now jumping back to all this okay and then again with the energy web token thing and, I, and again i i feel as though energy web token is is what i need to have in my portfolio i stated that we had tokenizer on the show um energy web token is his number one or number two of his top five behind quant he made that public right he's a a big proponent of energy web token so back in august 13th of 2022 all right blackrock induced a spike for energy web token now why would that be well they said back then they uh encouraged projects that focused listen to this on energy efficiency like energy web token which issues the ewt token now, of course, there was a big price spike that happened at that time because, let's face it, it's BlackRock. Now, I, can, or I get it, you know, maybe saying, well, why are you tying this in with the whole thing of Jasmine? Again, understand ESG data. For Jasmine to enter into the sector and you saw, for instance, how this impacted energy web token, what about Jasmine? Again, that should catch your attention because we are obviously talking about uh, Vanguard. A little bit more about this. Were you aware that, you know, this was posted, it was on M post and it stated that institution or BlackRock institutions is encouraged that organizations such as RMI and energy web are developing programs to bring greater transparency to sustainable energy usage. And for instance, Bitcoin mining will follow progress around this initiative. Now jumping into the Jasmine part, because you may be wondering about that. Well, for one, you have to keep in mind that Vanguard, if you're wondering, are they really invested into Japan? Yes, they are. Here's the proof in regards to that. So you have Vanguard FTSE Japan UCITS ETF. We're always talking about ETFs, right? Exchange traded funds and so on. Um, this dates back, of course, to 2021. I believe in 2020, they were talking about getting out of Hong Kong, Japan. Then they got, you know, they basically... Uh, uh, had at least this ETF. So at some point they got back into it. They're still into it. Uh, bottom line for you is they're obviously still invested into Japan. And what exactly does that mean for you as a, you know, a Jasmine holder and so on, right? Sounds crazy. Well, here's the thing. Investing into Japan. Is this a good time to invest into Japan? And is it a good time for the likes of Vanguard? to invest into Japan? Let's answer that. Well, Max, this is 2021. Can you give me something in regards to 2023? I'm right on top of that, my friends. And basically, here we go. Shout out to this guy. Um, and basically speaking, he is, let me just double check real quick, because I do want to give him a credit. He is desperately seeking FI, right? Um, interesting. He's got 1.52, um, 
subscribers. He has a YouTube channel and so on. So he's kind of like right around our level, right? I'm going to give a subscription. I'm going to like his video. But anyway, I know I'm not on that page. I want to share this one particular one because it's really fast forward uh, to the where we want to be without the commercials. And yeah, again, is it time to invest into Japan? Here, let me just bring it to that tab. Sorry about that. And the answer basically is yes. And who better than an institutional player, right? A big one. We're always including Vanguard and State Street in the same sentence for the most part when, you know, with the likes of BlackRock, right? Obviously, BlackRock is the uh, the king, the king turd of Turd Island, if you will. I guess you can call him the turd, but forget that, all right? The key thing is Vanguard is always in this key mention, okay? So, yes, the answer for me is yes. Is it time to invest in Japan? Yes. But what about Vanguard in Japan? And how about this? Is it recent? Yes, it is recent. There's the proof. August 20th, 2023 is this report from this gentleman. I fast forward it to this particular segment. He's going to explain some of this. Smash that like. Listen to a different perspective and think outside the box. Even if you don't hold Jasmine, you're going to want to pay attention to this. Here we go. I'm going to have a quick look at what we could buy from Vanguard. They do a FTSE Japan ETF under the ticker symbol VJPN. Very original. Vanguard Japan. Yeah. This is basically an ETF made up of 515 stocks. If you were to be buying it today, you'd be paying about £25.65. And it's got quite a nice little ongoing charge in there at 0.15%. As I always say, it's got a risk, six out of seven. Let's have a quick look at what the objective of this ETF is. It is basically, once again, passive management indexing against the FTSE Japan index and comprised of medium and large size companies in Japan. What's performance look like? A bit up and down. And I suppose this is where Japan has been over the past couple of decades, but potentially looking at some quite strong growth coming forward. With coming out of COVID, you had a nice increase of about 25%, a drop last year. Everybody basically tanked last year, but Good steady growth so far over the last year with about 15% increase taking place. Let's have a quick look and see where the regional exposure is. So within that Pacific region, it then drills down into 100% into Japan. What are we looking at on the weighted exposure across those different sectors? We're looking top three being industrials, consumer discretionary and technology Coming in very closely behind that, we also have the financials. We have a quick look at which companies we're actually looking to invest into. Some of those big names that we will know, the Toyotas, the Sonys, also into Mitsubishi on the financial as well as Mitsubishi Core and Hitachi. This does pay a small dividend, something similar to the Fusa side of things coming in at 1.88% and this pays quarterly and it comes in on the same kind of time scale as all the other Vanguard ETFs looking at that March, June, September and December payments. And it's going to cost you 0.15 of an ongoing charge to hold this ETF. And then on top of that, you also have that platform charge of 0.15%. So reasonably economical to hold this one. And there really are potential for some serious growth within the Japanese market. The main driver behind the growth this year to date has been those large companies in the Nikkei. Potentially that growth comes in from those underlying sort of second tier type of companies. And they, very similar to the FTSE 250, could be the real ones that give you that extra bit of growth. Go away, do some due diligence and have a look and see whether the Japanese market is something that you want to invest into. But why don't you go and have a look at this one, which talks about a wider set, the emerging market. So also bringing in China and India into the mix as well. You may wonder, why did I not cut it off right at the part he says, for instance, the secondary, right? That would have been good enough. But the reason why I played the rest of it, because he mentions India, he mentions China. And as we know, when it comes to Bajit, 
you can include the likes of India and Bangladesh and some of these other key uh, areas and so on, right? So it's like, yeah, I'm going to include that as well. And that is definitely worth paying attention to. So again, Vanguard, recognizing, like he said, these some of these secondary companies, right? Um, or some of the third parties and so on, right? It definitely plays an impact. Now, how do we get the whole thing in regards to, you know, Jasmine and so on? I get that. But you want to know something? This is all worth paying attention to, in my book, at least. Um, so for one, let me pull this up for a second. Let me just take you to this. We did talk about Nagoya, right? And, you know, in regards to the bigger picture, let me just pull this up. So Nagoya, all right? Here is their site. You know, we talked about the whole thing of um, even tying into, you know, Toyota, okay? So according to the notes, all right, relax and take notes, right? Basically speaking, um, Mr. Menelagar was talking about specifically, I believe it was Toyota. Let me just double check this. Yes, it's correct. So he was stating that the next step forward, basically, in regards to like ESG and type, tying all this together is uh, mobility, right? Mobility all the way. And we talk about autonomous vehicles. I mean, are we oblivious to think that it's just tesla or well, of course not right there's even some american manufacturers where um you know we have you know electric vehicles right i mean it's not just tesla but softbank and toyota there's this initiative that focuses on smart transportation solutions including autonomous vehicles and of course smart city infrastructure like i mentioned earlier guys again towards the whole main goal of society 5.0 that's the main objective i'm not going to give up on the idea um just because i you know some i might not like the idea that hara might not be the best for pr he needs some help but again i understand the main utility layers of jasmine and what he's connecting to big key players that are part of all this so in regards to all this uh smart city infrastructure even toyota is part of that we know that jasmine is not directly partnered with toyota but it's the subsidiaries, right? And again, like I've always mentioned before, it's like saying something like, uh, you know, is Tim Shea Incorporated, uh, you know, partnered up with, um, you know, uh, Daimler Chrysler Benz or something like that? No, not necessarily. But if anything, Tim Shea Incorporated could be, uh, you know, a subsidiary. And who would it be subsidiary be? If you, you guys know you're done your homework, be Mopar, right? Because that is the subsidiary and that provides the key parts that you need for your i don't know your dodge charger or you know i used to have a dodge intrepid back in the day it got stolen yeah i'm still upset about that but anyway that's beside the point again understanding subsidiaries not the main um you know the main branded company okay so yes there is that connection to toyota with jasmine through the subsidiary and we get more into this and basically speaking, Toyota is an active participant, given its headquarters where? In the facilities of the Nagoya area. So again, let's take you to this. This is Nagoya's site, and this is worth paying attention to. So it says, boldly moving ahead, Nagoya evolves in an era where society is being updated by what? Innovation. Absolutely. Constantly innovating, right? It's time to accept change and boldly move ahead. It goes on to mention, it's you, not others, who change the world. I want you to think about this for a second. What about Jasmine trying to change the world when it comes to entering into Web3, what they bring to the table when it comes to IoT? When I look into utility-driven projects, and I do, and you guys do as well, hence why, why would you even bother watching this? You understand the bigger picture of things. It's not one that will do it. It is one that is part of the overall goal with a lot of other companies to get the job done. Again, my reference to Hollywood production, not one person that makes the film, right? We know this when you watch the end credits. Look at Jasmine from that perspective. They are part of those end credits. What kind of end credits? Think about it. The end goal of society 5.0 right so again it's not you know you or it is you like it says it's not others 
but it's those who will change the world get on board with the future of their evolution and they got all sorts of things here that are worth paying attention they focus on three factors to back up the challengers they're creating a culture where all challengers are prized in order to accelerate value creation to change the world right pretty crazy stuff i mean obviously their site is in japanese it's in um it's uh basically also in english but they have all sorts of things here human resource development financial support they're trying to create all sorts of things they talk about the city of nagoya that promotes co-creation through initiatives such as programs for matching startup companies with existing companies now getting more into this if you think about this for a second who could be some of those existing companies i mean you know th there's just so much stuff to get into right uh, they also got this part support for demonstration experiments i mean you know um advanced technologies they're getting into they want to experiment they want to find some of those leaders they want to find some of those change um not but not decision makers but some of the industry players that could change the world of web3 or an ai you name it how about this whole thing about globalization they talk about promoting globalization in the local area through initiatives such as programs that support local companies that are aiming for global business development. I couldn't think of another one better than Jasmine. Maybe some of the people feels like, well, I sure as a heck can. But if you think about it, Jasmine is all about this concept of data democratization. Um, sorry, I keep looking at focus. Somebody keeps calling me. And, you know, the, the key thing of IoT, data democratization, but it's not just focused on their own token but also, how do we pair this up to contribute to the local economies um, for the betterment to get to basically society 5.0? That's the main thing. All right, I'm going to jump back to my notes real quick. And there's a little bit more in regards to this. Um, some very interesting research lately from Nagoya University. I want to take you to this. So let's pull this up as well. Give me just a second. Here it is. I believe this is the one. Hold on just a moment. Yeah. All right. So this one, yeah, is referenced from here. Um, there's all sorts of different things listed here and so on. In the notes, it goes on to mention that, you know, you have, I don't know, I guess you could say like a grocery list of this stuff. So basically, I mean, there's these laboratories and organizations that participate in the secure science program. But again, what's consistently mentioned here in what areas, right? Well, Nagoya city, right? Uh, university graduate school. You have Nagoya university here. Um, talks about the infrastructure network research group, information technology center, Nagoya university. Um, goes on more about this. Hold on a second. Pull up another one. I mean, even through medicine, right? What well, about the whole thing back to the carbon? Boom, you have some of this. Uh, nanomaterials, carbon nanotube. Um, getting more into some of this stuff. Hold on a second. Energy materials, Professor Tetsuo Soga, Nagoya Institute of Technology. So uh, here's the thing, right? All these, and, and you know, there's 23 pages of this, right? This is the bottom line. All these key ones when it comes to this whole thing of um you know esg and data and carbon i mean i i honestly think it's a really really big deal um getting more into this real quick there's this abstract paper uh, this is also part of my notes real quick give me a second pull this up there's this abstract paper that talks about some of the research uh, you know that we talked about from nagoya and we have cited I triple E. I'm sure you guys saw it in the intro of one of my videos. But motion estimation by deep learning using ambient sensor network. Again, guys, think about IoT, Internet of Things. Okay. Um, this is straight from I triple E explore dot I E E E dot org. What a title. But in this report, they got this whole thing about the collection of motion data, right? I think about motion data, I'm literally thinking of like Yoshiba. Remember Yoshiba? Um, he was part of Jasmine. Then he went on to do his own thing at Dreamforce. But he still um, looked at his pawn as like being an advisor, if you will. But he's contributing to the whole overall goal of Society 5.0. And on his site, 
there is uh, these sensors, right? In which basically speaking, you are using, um, you know, things to gather, excuse me, gather data uh, in regards, you know, to provide analytics to, you know, for instance, certain teams or that need that or um, and whatnot. But anyway, there's also baseball. We know that baseball is huge in Japan. It's their number one sport. So there's even a sensor for calculating like how the pitch is coming across or how batter hits the ball or, you know, uh, you know, calculate the measurement of how a swing is. And we've seen some of the controversial stuff even lately in regards to Major League Baseball. But they have this whole thing in which they collect this motion data of seven subjects from, um, you know, these measurements and units and even, look at this, smartphones simultaneously using their ambient sensor network. They, of course, estimate seven types of human motion, stand-up. So all this information, and again, reference back to Nagoya. Now, we understand that that's Nagoya, and some people will state, well, what about Nagano? What about the whole thing with Kunitaki Ando? And that's great. You know, that's a great example, basically speaking. But when you get more into even, um, you know, Nagano University, not Nagoya, right? Um, I found some other things here that were, I guess you could say, worth uh, pointing out. And I'm going to share this is with you as well. So, um, well, let's see, let me load that up real quick. And yeah, let me see here. It has just kind of a, like a lot of information, to say the least, when it comes to all this. So, for one, there's a, I guess you could say like a Wikipedia page. I mean, you can nerd it out if you choose to do so. Um but I'll show you this real quick. I, I, we did a deep dive in regards to this, I don't know, maybe eight months ago. Here's the whole thing in uh, the University of Nagano. Um, chairman, okay, is Kunitaki Ando. All right. So, again, even mentioning this right now, I, it sounds kind of confusing. You have Nagoya, you have Nagano. But, again, Kunitaki Ando, plain as day, uh, chairman, Okay. What about the history of Nagano in the prefecture? Well, it, it dates way, way back. They've been around for a long time, but um, they've had all these transitions. They have campuses uh, apparently all over the place. Um, they have a global center. I want you to think about this. Uh, it includes the organization of the study abroad, um, as well as you know providing materials and support academic trading opportunities, even in foreign language study. Um, What's this other one? They even allow international students to come in, right? Get more into this. Give me just a second. I want to pull this up as well. Remember how we talked about social innovation? Yes. Okay, this is the part I wanted to give you guys some of that uh, key highlights. So at the very beginning of the outline, we were talking about Clarity AI and what they bring to the table when it comes to um, this. Again, let me pull this back up. That one mission to bring, to bring societal impact to markets. And again, just in case you missed it, you just tuned in. To create forced pause in which decisions can be made with data-driven, unbiased information, thereby increasing users' confidence that their decisions have the intended impact. You know, again, data democratization all the way. I mean, it doesn't even need to say it for me to gather that, right? Um, they have transparency. Um, they even have, you know, some of these key players here in the United States even, right? And that, of course, is a big deal. It's worth paying attention. And that's, of course, why I'm bringing it to you guys. But I want to jump back, of course, to University of Nagano because we were talking about Kunitaki Ando. And again, back to the whole social impact of things. So the University of Nagano, whose chairman is Kunitaki Ando, has the Center of Social Innovation uh, Initiatives. And this should be your key, your you know your plug your connect. I always say that. So they aim to connect academia. Again, think about this, guys. What we've we been talking about, like even last week, giga school concept, right? So the educational side of it, boom, you have that. If you have Kunitaki Ando, who's literally the chairman, the head chairman, if you will, of this particular university, you understand how big that is, okay? On top of the industry, government, and the community, also located at Gosho, the CSI, as in Center of Social Innovation Initiatives, listen to this, focuses on developing solutions, products, and services. Think about this for a second, guys. Are we not looking at the bigger picture here? Developing solutions. 
a solution is a personal data locker, for instance, is a, a solution to also not just benefiting us, but benefiting by protecting people's data. What about the whole thing of solutions for the local economy? Well, being able to be able to quickly scan through your vein, not just your fingerprint and stuff like that, and get you boarded on a bullet train and go on a bus, go about your day, you name it, right? A constant flowing, innovative way of just getting on with a life in general compared to the old model. Look at this, services for contemporary social problems. Again, are we not tying this in to what was presented from creative, right? And again, what is creative? Or I said creative, excuse me, clarity AI. Again, clarity AI and what they bring to the table and then understand that Vanguard connection. So do we not see how this all comes in full circle? I think it, we do. Getting more into this, talks about, you know, um, the, again, the products. So I'm thinking like IoT all the way. Services for contemporary social problems. Again, Society 5.0. Everything that Jasmine has outlined from the beginning of when they went public in 2021. Okay. Um, all of this referencing even what, um, you know, rest in peace to uh, former Prime Minister Abe. Okay. Talking about the declining birth rate, aging population, environmental pressures from a business perspective. There's a lot of environmental pressures. Why we always reference the whole thing of the Rice Cup Consortium. Sounds like a joke because I joke about it, but it's not a joke. From February 2019, the university that Kunitaki Ando heads up here signed a comprehensive cooperation agreement with the Nagano Prefecture government. Remember earlier we talked about prefecture? I mean, do you catch some of this stuff that I'm talking about? Prefecture government and Nahan Unisys on social innovation to solve regional issues. Now, here's your boil it, mash it, stick in this too. I want you to think really, really, really outside the box. Because when I even pull this up, when it comes to all this, once again, let's just re-remind you because we, we're going to do a little quick review real, real quick. You have this literally cited from where NASCOM community and again about this whole strategy. And like it says, you know, social impact, you know, that's the bottom line. And it gets so into this that it's just beyond, I don't know, maybe it's hard for people to comprehend this. So for one, like she says, in conclusion, ESG data, this should be your takeaway. Analytics strategy involves a company's sustainability compliance inspection across the environmental, social, again, that university, Kunitaki Ando, don't forget, and governance pillars. Its applications have guided investors and business leaders in responsible decision making. Tie that into Vanguard. Tie this into the Web3. Tie it into all of the bigger picture. Then this last part. Therefore, impact investors and modern businesses do what? Leverage, because we've been talking about a lot of leveraging when it comes to, you know, even BlackRock and so on. Leveraging ESG benchmarking. They want to realize that sustainable development goals, which are SDGs, for a cleaner, happier, and more secure future. You ever wonder why Jasmine has this thing of, um, what is it called, um, you know, happiness and you know um uh the whole thing excuse me i'm kind of losing it real quick you have uh platinum data with harmony you ever notice how they call it or with happiness I'm, excuse me platinum data with happiness think about it. all this stuff that is literally you mentioned here even matches up to that look at the tags here esg data analytics esg analytics esg and data analytics and last but not least who is the lady that wrote this? Her name is Tanya Gupta. Who is she? She's a Google certified digital marketing strategist with strategist, excuse me, with six plus years experience in digital marketing. She started her career as a search engine. I know what the SEOs are, uh, search engine optimization executive. That's what it means. And slowly moved into mainstream digital marketing. Um, 
So she obviously knows a little something. How about this? She also worked with IOT or information, sorry, not IOT. Uh, she's into IT and is in the services industry. So, I mean, if anything, she's just not some random weird person. Again, guys, I'm just telling you flat out. I think this is, there's really something here when I, you understand the bigger picture and you tie all this into um, to the mix, if you will. Um, that is basically, let me just double check a couple things. Yeah, that is it in regards to our coverage tonight for Jasmine. I, I know I said it was going to get an hour too long. It was a little bit longer than expected. But I want to thank Mental Mogwar for bringing some of this to our attention. There's another thing we're working on as well in regards to the research. But um, I'm looking at it from the bigger perspective. I like the idea of seeing the institutional players, what they're invested into. I like to basically connect the dots of – Seeing like, wow, you know, Vanguard is really into this whole thing of, um, you know, ESG data, um, you know, even BlackRock, for instance. And then you got this whole thing of, um, you know, this the, the social thing, which is a big deal in regards to Japan. And you see how they invest in that. And then we see the whole thing of Kunitaki Ando, um, who literally heads up a department that focuses on that industry. So, I mean, this whole notion that these guys are oblivious to this or they don't know about this is a crock, absolute crock. They do know about it. This is why they do their own research. They're not going to just throw a bunch of money into Japan for no reason. And again, you know, if you didn't realize um, the whole thing of like, you know, Vanguard being tied into all this, Vanguard, FTSE Japan, UCITS, ETF, um, I guess originally started 2019. Maybe they got out in 2020. I did see a report about that. But nonetheless, this shows that they have been investing, from my understanding, uh, from at least October of 2021. You know, as we know, Jasmine went public uh, as far as the public offering in 2021. So, you know, it is what it is. You know, I won't stop. I mean, I won't stop talking about Jasmine, but that is it for tonight. We have some other things we're going to get into. Please smash that like. Hopefully you enjoy this piece tonight. And thank you to Menon Laguar for helping out big time in regards to the research.